Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thanks so much for joining us today. Our guest in studio today is Deanna Wan. She's the founder of Keynotes to Life, LLC, and she's also a speaker, leadership consultant, and holistic health coach. She's also a former Air Force colonel and physicist of over 26 years, uh, who at the peak of her career, she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. How are you doing today, Deanna? Oh, I'm doing really great, Neil. Thanks I, for having me on the show. Thank you so much for, for joining us. You are a cancer survivor, and there are many people who are inspired just to hear your story. Yes, I'm, indeed, I'm, I'm grateful to be alive. Uh, it was uh, looking pretty grim for me uh, a while back. I didn't even think I was going to live to see my retirement from the Air Force. In the Air Force, you, you were an Air Force colonel and a physicist. I'm sure that you worked on some very interesting projects. Uh, is there anything that uh, you can tell us that was exciting? Oh, yeah, there were lots of exciting things that I worked on. Um, you know, right out of school, I went to the Air Force Academy mm -hmm. and majored in physics. And so um, upon graduating, I was just really thrilled because I was actually allowed to work in a laboratory and was told to, you know, design a laser radar system mm -hmm. from scratch. So that was pretty exciting. Um, and uh, I went on from there to working on things like, you know, launching satellites mm -hmm. to uh, chemical and biological warfare defense, um, missile defense, and also in NATO operations. It's in the Air Force, as I, as I mentioned earlier, at, at the very peak of your career as a, as a scientist and as an officer that you were diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Yes. And that came about quite by accident. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually on my way to a yoga class, and it was during the winter time. And I slipped on ice and uh, went airborne, landed right on my tailbone, and I had to be taken to the hospital where they were uh, scanning um, me to see if I had broken my tailbone. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was incident to that scan that they said, "Oh, by the way, um, we noticed that you have a, a cyst on your left ovary." And so that was the first indicator that I had that, you know, something wasn't quite right. You say that was the very first indicator. Have you since learned that um, other people experience symptoms? Uh, maybe some people experience none as, as yourself, or are there symptoms that you maybe should have? And you, you, you've been called a miracle so far. So maybe is have you learned that that is the case, that there are symptoms that you should have experienced, just didn't? Um, actually, the symptoms of ovarian cancer are extremely vague, mm -hmm. and you know it's known as the cancer that whispers for that reason. And so, some of the symptoms include uh, feeling bloated, even if you had not eaten, or else uh, you know you might just eat a few bites of your meal and you feel uh, full, um, mm -hmm. or else you might feel some pressure or pain um, in your abdomen or your pelvis mm -hmm. or even in your back, and there might be some changes in the urgency or frequency of urination as well, or you might notice some um, abnormal bleeding. But um, for me, I really did not have at least initially any indicator, any of these uh, symptoms. I, you know, when I went to follow up with my doctor, in fact, uh, she asked me, uh, well, do you feel any pain? And I said, no, I don't. And so she just said, well, you know, don't worry about it because cysts are very common in women of childbearing age. And so I didn't worry about it until uh, 10 months later, uh, I have excruciating pain and it radiates from my pelvis all the way up to my right shoulder. And I had to be hospitalized and put on a morphine IV at that point. So this was something you, you were going about your, your day doing whatever and all of a sudden, bam, this excruciating pain hit you or was it gradual over a couple, three days and all of a sudden it was, you know, you woke up and said, wow, this hurts way more than it did yesterday. Well, um, actually what happened is about three months prior to that excruciating pain, I started noticing a pressure building up in my uh, pelvic area. Mm -hmm. But, you know, because I work, you know, really long hours and I would be sitting in the office, you know, often, you know, 16, sometimes 18 hours a day uh -huh. in front of a computer, I just attributed the pressure I was feeling just to the lack of movement. And I, I, I didn't think it was anything, you know, more than that. A while ago, you were talking about the, the uh, vagueness of the symptoms. If you did experience anything like that, I mean, not that you did, I'm just saying anyone who does, they could be associated with so many other things that are actually common to, to folks uh, at varying ages of their life and, and all sorts of other factors. So even if the symptoms were experienced, 
you might think there was something totally different and um, not consider ovarian cancer or cancer of any type for that matter for quite a while. That's exactly right. Um, I know of people who, you know, have ovarian cancer and they were initially sent off to see the, you know, the GI doctor because mm -hmm. they were thinking that they had, you know, irritable bowel syndrome or colitis or something like that. During this, this time, uh, you, you are now a, a health uh, coach, uh, as a matter of fact. You were sitting at your desk for long hours. Was, did you have a period of time uh, during your day or your week where you were doing vigorous exercising at all? Well, yeah, I, I did. You know, being in the Air Force, they do want you to um, maintain physical fitness, you know, since we were tested once a year. And so I would, during my lunchtime, try to, you know, take a break, at which point I would go to the gym and, you know, either go jogging or weightlifting. But I, I think overall it was not enough um, not to make up for all the times that I was sitting. So I guess what I'm getting at is you were at the height of your career. You feel absolutely healthy. You're exercising probably more than most <laughs> most of us are doing simply because you're, you're, you're in that environment and you want to be healthy. And everything is going absolutely great. And there's no indication of anything at all being wrong until you slip on the ice. That's correct. You know, I, I thought I was uh, extremely healthy, you know, because I, I was also a nationally um, certified fitness instructor for Absolutely. eight years. And so I, I, you know, I paid attention to what I was eating. I exercised, you know, I, I, I didn't drink soda pop or any of the junk foods. I, I ate what I thought was a, a very clean diet. And so I was uh, very shocked. But then, you know, when I look back at some of the different environmental um, toxic exposures that I had, um, I, I think some of it actually makes sense now because I know I was exposed to, you know, nuclear radiation, you know, just in some of, you know, working in a lab and also with pesticide exposure, uh, which I actually have documented in my medical records. So basically, uh, the environment that you were in, some of the things that you were working on could have uh, quite, uh, quite easily exposed you to some carcinogenic uh, uh, substances uh, throughout your career, uh, contributing to this ovarian cancer? Yes. In fact, I, I did a little bit of research, um, even on the vaccines uh, that we have to get uh, that are mandatory in the military. Mm -hmm. And one of them was the H1N1, you know, the swine yeah. flu. And, and my understanding is that there are, um, you know, some definite uh, correlations there uh, between, you know, just how they extract um, you know, how they create the vaccine and it comes out of, you know, these African monkeys mm -hmm. and, and these monkeys actually had, you know, cancer, um, f uh, cells in them. So, um, I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, you'll tell us a little bit about why you're referred to, uh, in many circles as, uh, a medical miracle. Uh, sure. Um, well, mainly because, um, my condition, uh, you know, with the ovarian cancer, uh, it basically deteriorated to the point where, uh, I had, you know, peritoneal carcinoma, you know, the, the peritoneal lining, mm -hmm. um, you know, showed just the few spread of the disease. Um, and in fact, when I first started out, I had it, there was a tumor in my lung, I had a tumor in my left leg as well. Um, and um, when it got uh, to the point where my lungs collapsed and filled with fluid, my doctors lost hope for my survival. And I was placed under hospice care at that point on oxygen because I was uh, really struggling to breathe. And um, my oncologist told me I had a month uh, left to live. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, it, it was just, uh, you know, one of those things where all of my doctors uh, really did not believe I was going to survive much longer. And so when I was uh, sick, I actually decided, you know, because I was trying to learn and, and research on my own to see what I could do to turn this around. So I enrolled in the Institute for Integrative Nutrition and just began to study all the different dietary theories and and looking at the whole mind-body connection because, you know, it was easy for me to gravitate towards nutrition because as a scientist, uh, you know, I, I could easily understand those concepts, but then it was harder for me to really deal with the emotional area, but I found that at a certain point, I felt like I had plateaued and, and I had to do further work um, in order to continue to heal. And so that's when I looked into trying to resolve, 
you know, any and all, you know, emotional conflicts that I feel like, you know, weren't resolved. And um, I just think that's really important for anyone that's looking to, you know, heal holistically from a life-threatening illness, especially. Now, as we as we wrap up, could you tell us uh, about your foundation, uh, Keynotes to Life uh, LLC? Um, talk a little bit about um, what your, the mission of this foundation is. Okay, the, the mission of Keynotes to Life is to um, inspire people to become um, leaders. And when I say leaders, I, I don't mean just, you know, in the business or military sense, but even as personal leaders so that they can, um, you know, take authority and responsibility over their health. And so part of my mission is really to educate people, to let them know that there are alternatives um, to, you know, conventional medical um, treatments. And often these holistic and alternative ways uh, don't have the negative side effects of uh, conventional treatment. Now, certainly, you know, there are times when uh, conventional treatment is going to be needed. Um, you know, anytime I think, you know, I think of crises and accidents, uh, there's no better care than our, you know, conventional uh, Western medical system. But if we're looking at trying to maintain health and wellness, then there's just a myriad of of different methods of, of healing and, and maintaining health. And so that's the main mission is to spread awareness, to educate, and also um, to, you know, coach people one-on-one -on -one or to give, you know, ins inspirational talks um, just to, um, you know, get people to be thinking along these lines. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. We've been in studio this afternoon speaking with Deanna Wan, founder of Keynotes to Life, speaking about how she survived ovarian cancer through changing her, her diet, um, how going along about her life, uh, everything was fine. She was extremely healthy and also a fitness coach at the time, how uh, ovarian cancer can strike. It, it's known as the whispering cancer, I do believe you said, uh, Deanna, whispering cancer. Uh, yes. yes. It's either the, the cancer that whispers or, you know, the, the mm -hmm. silent cancer. Silent cancer, and uh, for, for a very good reason. And uh, she's also a, a former U.S. Air Force colonel and physicist of over 26 years. And um, hopefully she's going to come back and uh, speak with us at uh, a later time and, and tell us a little bit more about her story and uh, her mission as the founder of Keynotes to Life. It's been great talking with you this afternoon, Deanna. That was great talking to you, too, Neil. Thank you very much. Thank you. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm. And you can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes.